This video is sponsored by Track Club. Get two months of music for your content free by using the link in the description. What is up people, Dunny here, and today we're gonna be upping your DaVinci Resolve game by giving you 11 things that you probably didn't know you could do inside DaVinci Resolve. Resolve is an incredibly expansive piece of software, so you could use it for years and still be finding new features on pretty much a daily basis, not to mention they're constantly coming out with updates that also have even more new features that they're always throwing at us. So today we're going over 11 lesser known features that I found to make my workflow in DaVinci Resolve so much better and hopefully it'll do the same for you. Secure the cup, let's dive in. Okay, so the first trick here is kind of fitting because this is where I start all of my new projects and that is dragging in folders from the operating system and having them automatically populate within DaVinci Resolve. Check this out. So let's say I wanna import some stuff into my footage category here. So I've got an empty bin here that is called footage. So I'm gonna go over to my finder and I've got another folder called video here. And then within that, there's an A1 and an FX3. So those are the two cameras that I used for my footage on this video. So what I'm gonna do is instead of like going into one of these folders and highlighting all the video files and then dragging it in here, I'm actually just gonna grab both of these folders and then I'm going to drag them not into this area where the footage will show up, but actually over top of this footage folder. And then what's gonna happen is it's going to create bins or create folders inside the footage folder that are the same name as what they were called in my operating system with all of the footage inside them. It makes it so much easier if you're a person who organizes your footage on your operating system and then you can just drag everything over. Another example of this is like I've got my DJI mic 2, so my lav, uh, external audio here, and then I've got my music from Track Club, and I could drag that into the audio folder. And again, it's created two different bins inside that audio folder, named the same things that they were named in Finder, and it has everything that I want in there. The next tip is something called the crop overlay tool. So if I've got a clip like this on my timeline and let's say I want to crop the top and bottom of it for whatever reason, normally I would go over to my inspector, make sure I click cropping to open these up and then I've got my top and bottom sliders here that I can fiddle with until I get what I want or I can type in what I want. Let's say I want 250 on the top and bottom. So now I've got my like cinematic bars or whatever. But what you can also do if you're trying to, let's say get rid of something Thing on the top and bottom and go to a very specific point is you can go down to the bottom left hand side of your viewer here and there's a little drop down that you can change over to crop. When you do that, you'll see this line around the edge with all these points and you can just drag and you can see it on the inspector over on the right hand side, you can see it moving. So it's doing the same thing, but you can do it kind of without having to deal with your sliders. So sometimes it's handier to do it with the sliders. Sometimes it's a lot easier to just be able to grab, drag in and do exactly what you want just by kind of placing it like more interactively. And speaking of that drop down menu on the bottom left hand side of the viewer, the next tip is to use the transform tool within that same drop down menu. So again, normally we've got all this stuff up in the inspector up on the top right hand side. So if I wanted to, let's say zoom this in a little bit and then move it up, I'm gonna have to use this position and maybe I wanna center myself in the frame. So I'm gonna move it using the X position. So now I've got what I want. But what I can also do if I reset that, if I go down and make sure that the transform overlay tool is on. So now I can just grab and zoom in however much I want and then I can move it over just by dragging it. And then I'm gonna hit Z or Z to make my viewer as big as it needs to be again. And bam, we have pretty much the same thing, but again, kind of in a more interactive way instead of dealing with these transform controls up in the inspector and just dealing with sliders and numbers. Now, let's backtrack to the media section for a while. So I've got my bin here called FX3 and I've got most of my video clips in there, but let's say I went and shot some more footage and I need to import that into that folder. So you'll 
you'll notice that I go up to FX3 2286 down here. That's the last one in my current list. But if I go into Finder and we go into our FX3 folder, you'll see it goes all the way up to 2293. So we're missing basically from 2287 to 2293. Because I dragged that folder in the way that I did at the start of this video, what I can do is go into that folder, right click anywhere and hit resync media files and it will go find the source folder that I got this from and it'll update any new media files that are in it. Now you can see it imported 2287 through 2293 and this is huge. I think this is new for DaVinci Resolve 19 and I absolutely love it. As far as I'm aware, it only currently works for video files, but I'd love to see it implemented for audio files and for graphics and for photos as well. But for now, it's really great for if you're constantly updating what you've got in your video folders. The next trick is something that I find really useful, especially when dealing with music. So in my videos, I talk a lot and there's music and every time that I'm done talking, talking and there's a little gap that I'm just gonna show some footage, the music has to come up and then every time I start talking, the music has to go down. So I do a lot of volume automation. So I'll go in, I'll create a couple of points by clicking with option held and I'll bring the volume down like this. And then when I'm done talking, I'll make another couple points and I'll bring the volume back up and so on and so forth. So I'll make a bunch of these different volume adjustments. And the problem with this is that I'm really picky about my music. So if I get to the end of editing that section and I don't like the music and I wanna swap it out, it would be really nice not to have to redo all of that different automation again. So let's go find some new music here to replace in this section by going to Track Club. Now Track Club is the sponsor of this video Video and I really love their music. You've probably heard me talk about them before. They've got really high quality stuff and they've got Mix Lab, which allows you to remix the song right on the website. But there's something new and special that I really wanna show you guys today. So they have a bunch of different great ways that you can find music, including their playlists or their discover page, or just by browsing via the songs and using their filters. But they've also added this similarity search where you can drop in a YouTube or a Spotify link and it'll find similar songs on their platform. I listen to a lot of these kind of like lo-fi, happy instrumental beats while I'm working and all that kind of stuff. So let's find a song that I like here. That one's cool. It's kind of like got a hip hoppy Latin type of thing going on with it. Nice and chill, good like background music for a song. So I'm gonna copy the song link and I'm gonna paste it into the similarity search. Then when I hit it, it's gonna take a second to identify what that song sounds like. And then we're gonna be able to go in here and hear similar songs. So it has 100% identified that this is one of those kind of like nice background beats, like lo-fi type of thing. It's got a hip hop kind of vibe to it. Nailed it. So I'll audition a couple of these and then I really like this Rain of Fall one. So we're gonna download that and then I'm going to drag it into my music from Track Club on DaVinci Resolve. So here's where the magic happens where we can keep our volume automation in there, but we're going to be able to put this new song in there. So I'm highlighted on the clip in the timeline that I want to get rid of, and I'm highlighted on the new song in the media bin. And then we hit F11, which is the replace function. Now you can see it's got a new song. We've got that rain of fall, but all that volume automation is still in there. Now this is unbelievably handy, not only if you're someone like me that gets really picky with music and changes their mind all the time, but also if you're using music that clients wanna get swapped out, it can be one of the most frustrating things and this makes it so much easier. The next trick here is for when you're color grading. Now I use curves a lot when I'm color grading and this one works great. All you're gonna do is hold option or alt when you're creating a point on your curves line. And all that's going to do is snap it to that diagonal line where it starts out. If you push it far enough, it'll go, but you can see how it kind of snaps back into place when I get close there. So something that I often find myself wanting to do is bring up my shadows. So what I'll do is actually grab an anchor point here. So I'll hold option and create an anchor point and drag it down somewhere 
somewhere like that. And then I can bring up the very black points a little ways. And then what I can do again is holding Option or Alt and dragging this point until it starts to affect the parts of the image that I want it to. So something like that might be good. And now that's anchored right there and we're pretty good to go. Now, moving back to audio for a second, you'll remember that earlier we imported this DJI Mic 2 folder. So these are all my external audio files. So that's from my lav mic that I was wearing on the day. You can see it right there. And so what I wanna do now is sync up those external audio files with the files from the FX3 folder, which has all my talking head bits in it. So what we could do is grab one of our talking head bits, drag it on there, and then grab the corresponding external mic clip, make sure that they're both selected, right click, and auto align clips by waveform. So we can do it on the timeline and it'll automatically snap that so that they're lined up with each other. But as you can see, my audio clip is way longer. It looks like there's a whole other talking head clip in there. So it's gonna start to get really complicated if I'm trying to do this on the timeline. So here's the trick. You can actually do it in the media bin by making sure that you hold command or control if you're on a PC to open both folders at the same time. So you can see I'm highlighted both on FX3 and DJI Mic 2. And if I scroll down here, you can see all the audio files at the bottom and all the video files at the top. I'm gonna to hit Command A or Control A to select all. And then I'm going to right click and go auto sync audio by waveform. We've got some options here. So we can use a specific channel number to sync them. We can use a mix or we can choose automatic. I usually just leave it on automatic. Then we can retain the embedded audio or we can retain the video metadata. So I'm actually gonna leave both of those off for now. If we choose to retain embedded audio, all it's gonna do is when we drag that audio clip onto the timeline, it's gonna have multiple audio tracks, the one that was embedded into the camera and then the one that was the external audio, but I don't really want that. I just wanna see the one that is the external audio. And I'm just gonna hit sync. It's gonna take a second to analyze all of that content and it's gonna give me a warning where it couldn't find matches. And that's totally fine because not all of these clips had the dialogue in them. And that's one of the best things about this. I just click auto sync and it'll sync it anywhere that it can. Now when I hit okay, if I go to one of my talking head bits and I drag it onto the timeline, the thing that you'll notice down here is that there's a little circle. So that means that that's linked external audio. And if I right click and I hit clip attributes and I go to the audio page, you'll see that the audio that's on there is linked channel one. Now within this, we can choose embedded channel one or embedded channel two. That's the left and right channels from the camera or linked channel one. So if I wanna go back to the internal audio, it's as easy as changing that to embedded channel one. There's my embedded channel one. But in this case, I want it to be linked channel one and we're good there. The next tip is to use overlay or safe guide. So in the top right corner of our viewer window here, there's this little drop down menu that has all of these different overlays that we can use and safe area guides. So for some reason it defaults to this 1.33 version. It's got this ratio over top of it. 1.77 is your 16 by nine. So that's gonna give you the outside as well as these little marks, which I actually find quite handy for finding the center point. And then if we wanna add some safe area guides down here, so this one they call action. So you wanna make sure that all your action lands within that frame. If you want a title, it's a little further in, you wanna make sure your titles are within that. And then you can add a center point if that makes things easier. You can also do this for social media. So we can add a nine by 16 or a four by five if we want. There are all sorts of different options up in here. And then I have a quick command to turn them on and off and that'll automatically pop that up so I can use it when I need it and I can quickly hide it when I don't. All right, the next one I mentioned in another video and people kind of exploded about how much of a time saver it was for them. So this is using easing in your inspector. So let's say we wanna do a little zoom in here. So right there, I want to set a keyframe and I'm gonna go over by about a second. So I just hit shift and the right key to move by a second and I'm gonna zoom it in and maybe I'll play with the anchor point so that it zooms in with me still in the frame. Now, normally what you'd have to do to ease that keyframe is you'd have to go into your spline here and you can click on one of them and you can set ease in, click on the other one, set ease out. Now we've got a nice 
smooth kind of zoom in. But the easiest way to do this, let's say we just made these keyframes. So we keyframed it, we went over, we zoomed in, we did all that stuff. All we're gonna do while we're on that second keyframe is right click on this keyframe dot here and hit ease in, go back by one keyframe and ease out. And now we've got that same thing happening. We can confirm that it's the same by opening this up again and seeing that there's a curve in there. And that is a much easier way to make those smooth, eased out and in transitions or zooms or whatever you wanna do inside the transform. One thing that I've been doing a lot lately is creating captions or subtitles on top of especially my social content, my vertical content. And I like to use the same style of caption all the time because it's kind of my brand. And so this is how you can save your caption style to use over and over. So first of all, we're going to go to timeline. We're gonna go create subtitles from audio and let it do its thing. Now, if we click on any of these little caption bubbles here, it's going to give us the captions up in the top right corner here. But if we click over on track, we can go in here, we can change the font, can change the color. I generally like to go all caps. I get rid of the stroke around it and then maybe add a little bit of a drop shadow and then maybe move it down a little bit here. Let's bring up our safe guide so we make sure we don't go below that. And then you can see because I went over to the track portion, it's applied that to all of them. But let's say I wanted to do that again on the next project. All I'm gonna do is go up to these three dots in the top right corner. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna click save track as preset and I'm going to give it a name, right? And I click OK. So the next time I create subtitles on a video, all I have to do is go up to track, go to the three dots and hit yellow caps, load preset, and it'll automatically apply that as the track preset. This next tip is a new one and I wish I had had it a long time ago because I've made this mistake more times than I would like to admit. If you're moving things around using the transform controls and you accidentally move it to where there's a little bit of black, it would be really nice to be able to create a color or something else under there so it was a little bit more obvious when you've gone too far with your transform. Now you can, all you have to do is go down to this bottom left part of your viewer. You're gonna click on timeline view options and you can change the viewer background to checkerboard. Now it looks more like a photo editing software where we've got that checkerboard background. We can see when it's going to be a problem if we've moved it too far. It's also really great for if you're creating titles. If our text, for example, we wanted it to be black, if we go with with the default black background, we can't see our text at all. But if we've got that viewer background set to checkerboard, you've now got the ability to actually see it and be able to customize it and whatever you need to do. I wish I had that before, so handy. So there we go, there's 11 things you probably didn't know you could do in DaVinci Resolve, or maybe you did. Leave a comment down below, let me know which ones you knew, which ones you didn't, and which ones you think will be most useful for you. And on your way down there, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.